Hello there, Taurus. Welcome to your tarot reading. I hope that it resonates with you, and I hope that you're able to extract information or, you know, guidance from this. Um, so I just feel like I have to, you know, relay the message that things are going to be really stabilizing for you, and you're going to feel this towards the end of December, where um, whatever lingering doubts, whatever hesitation that you have had in dealing with a person, a situation, a work environment, whatever it might be for you, you're going to get some answers and you're going to get some clarity. And I do feel like a lot of it is uh, your own sense of knowing. And so um, I hope this video is helpful either way, okay? So I guess the message here is just kind of like um, the, the resolution is coming, the decisions are coming, or at least the information is coming. I don't see lack of um, information coming through the spread, but I do see some clear resolution, some clear um, decision making is going to be available for you, especially towards the end of December, okay? So. This card is screaming out Taurus, Taurus, okay? So I, I feel like um, I, I feel like it's on point for me energetically as a reader. Um, you have two strong cards here that indicate pretty much, you know, your sign. I have here the King of Pentacles. This is an Earth sign, someone who's very practical, very pragmatic. Uh, when he or she makes decision, it comes from a space of, you know, being able to weigh out all the factors that that might affect the outcome of the decision. So this is someone who's very meticulous about making decision. They ponder over a situation. They are not impulsive, they're not um, rash, and they're very rational when it comes to you know the decision-making process. They weigh out the pros and the cons, and they mull things over. Uh, some people might say that uh, you know tourists take a really long time to deliberate before making a decision. But I feel in this situation, you know, you're level-headed, you're clear. You know what works for you, you know what don't. Um, you know what will not work, no matter how much you try to, you know, um, justify or rationalize. I feel like you come into this sense of knowing what will work and what won't. And then we have the Hierophant, which is your card. The Hierophant deals with structure, stability. It's like the, the stable pillars of society on which civilization and, and things can be built. And uh, with this card, it indicates an owl, okay? Full of wisdom, full of insights, and full of knowledge. The owl is sitting on a stack of books, okay? So, I mean, you can't get more theoretical than this because this is someone who has the gift of insight, the gift of wisdom, a lot of research experience into a specific topic under their belt. This is also a card about going back to school. So first of all, let me relay the messages, um, the images that came through for you. And then we'll talk about how um, the message ties in with the cards. So. I see this shop, and uh, it's a really fancy shop, boutique, it's like a designer boutique in inside a very fancy shopping mall, okay, so it's like a shopping strip full of um, luxury boutiques, brand names, and designer names, okay, designer um, items, and it has really high ceiling, and there's like chandeliers and floodlights, so this is a very expensive um, place. Um, I see a customer, so I'm kind of looking through the eyes of a customer. She walks in, I, I feel like it's a woman. She walks in and she's looking at the store full of leather goods, okay? So it's a luxury store full of leather goods. Um, the things that are on sale, not on sale like reduced price, but the things that are available for sale at this boutique is um, leather shoes, Italian made leather shoes um belts and handbags okay so it's all leather goods wallets um journals even with a leather bound you know cover and she's looking around and you know the the chandeliers the lighting everything just makes the items sparkle and already i just feel like you know she's taken in by by the, the sparkliness the, the the cleanliness 
and just you know the the high ceiling it just makes everything seem so extravagant she's poking around and then behind one of the walls and one of the pillars is this salesman he looks like he's you know in his late 20s he's uh dressed in a suit with those uh really thin ties that are you know the stylish these days his hair is kept um it's swept back he has black hair he just looks really handsome he looks like just very put together and um i guess like the person behind the cash register is calling to him and kind of like you know calling him and then looking at the woman indicating to him in a non-verbal way to take care of that customer to to see what she needs to land a sale to you know do what you got to do as a salesman so i i feel like he's a salesman and so he hesitantly walks up to her and i hear a little bit of conversation exchange between the two of them just like hello how are you is there anything i can help you with and then i i just don't hear anything else so they're still conversing but i stop hearing what they're saying so i i'm i'm sensing that you can be the salesman or you can be the person being sold to okay um i feel that the hesitation from his end deals with a lot of um the sense of ethics from his end okay so he he's like in his 20s he he's still very young you know um starting out into the world this is probably his first serious uh job it seems like he's good at it because he's dressed the part but he's also in this luxury department or um you know like a designer item boutique i don't even know what you call it and he looks around and he's sort of thinking you know this is not really worth the steep price tag okay everything here is leather good it might be imported it might not be and and so he's hesitant about selling these items to this person because of the high the, the steep price he in the greater scheme of things doesn't feel that it's worth it so he's in his 20s making his way into the world he's probably you know um got a hotel Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, an apartment bill that he is paying for. He's probably got car payments. So, in in the grander scheme of things, he understands that you know, um, these designer items are probably not worth the price. And so, I'm not going to try to upsell anything. I'm going to try to, you know, just ask the lady what she needs and then show her a few items that we have in in stock, but I'm not going to pressure her. Even though I might make the commission, I'm not going to pressure her. So I definitely feel some hesitation from his end about upselling, about uh promising more than, you know, he could deliver or the product could deliver. Um trying to weigh out the ethics of, you know, this situation. um and trying to you know make sure that you do right by the other person okay so what i do sense here is um that that energy coming through in this spread for you guys where you're deliberating a decision making a uh, deliberating over a choice trying to do the right thing trying to take the practical decision as well okay to make the practical decision or to take the the more practical route when it comes to what you do And so for some of you you might be in a career path where you feel like things are not really progressing as it should. Okay, so once again this is you seeing the true value in yourself, knowing full well your capabilities, the education, the life experience, the um the knowledge that you bring to the table, okay? You've got this pentacle in your hand. knowing full well your skills and assets and not willing to settle for less okay so i feel like deep down you have this sense of knowing that i deserve more i'm in a place probably in a transitory way it's it's transient it's not forever and so i have to make do with the situation and i do feel with this imagery on top of uh, underneath actually the hangman The hangman is being in a a situation that you feel is a state of like it's it's temporary it's not permanent you can get yourself out of this situation but you're biding your time so some of you are in a current work situation that you feel 
uh, an end need to be put to it. You feel like you're not really、um, either the people don't appreciate everything that you have to offer, or you feel like you're not able to display yourself to your full capabilities, the things that you value about yourself. Your、um, work ethics, your meticulousness, those things are might not be valued by the people that you、uh, work for. Your、um, your brilliant mind, you feel like for whatever reason, it's not valued, or it might be devalued, or not a lot of emphasis is、um, is is placed on 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 you know the the skills that you bring to the table. So you feel that the longer you stay in this work environment or this situation, the more of yourself get lost in the shuffle. The 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 these good qualities about yourself, these qualities that make you uniquely you, you feel like it's um it, it gets lost in the shuffle. Does that make sense? And so I'm sensing that for many of you,、uh, you're deliberating a change of environment. Okay. I also feel an environment where a lot of people are coming and going. It's like a revolving door. Okay, you might form attachments, relationship with somebody, but at the same time, it's like, oh, I, I, you know, for example, I really get along with this person, and then in a few months, they're looking for other things. They're 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 flying the nest to go and find whatever is more suitable for them. Another job, another position, another company, another location, even. So where you are is it's kind of like a, a transit hub, because people are constantly going and 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 leaving, and so you find yourself here. You might have stayed here for a very long time. You might have thought that like, oh, you know, I can build a life here, and so you start building a life here, and then you realize that maybe this work is not one hundred percent suitable for me. So I need to find something that is a little bit more up my alley. And so I feel that you're kind of questioning, you know, where do I fit in this environment? Do I even fit in? And you know, have I already outgrown this environment? Do I need to, you know, literally plant my seeds, plant my、um, pentacles, you know, elsewhere? Is this a, a place where I can settle down and retire and, and build up the nest egg, and you know、uh, be secure long term, or do I need to look at other options? So I feel for many of you, you're looking at greener pastures. You're kind of looking at an environment where you can thrive a little bit better, where the things that other people value will be in alignment with what you value, where your skills and assets are on full display, where you're going to be able to make a mark in the world. So I, I do sense. There is a lot more that you want out of life, okay?、Um, I feel like somebody in your life has really stirred up these feelings within you, the 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 feeling of wanting more, not in the spirit of you know restlessness or or things like that, but they are stirring up higher ideals, higher vision within you. What exactly does that mean? Well, it basically means that. We can be comfortable with the status quo, okay? Where the money's good, you know, the the man in the the the, the store, he probably makes really good commission because it's such an expensive store that、uh, if you are paying like you know eight hundred, nine hundred, a thousand for like a leather belt, he's probably making like fifteen percent commission out of that. So he's paying, getting paid well. He's dressed the part. He's really good at his job. He's just a little bit hesitant about. Selling something that is very functional, like a belt, to somebody for like a thousand dollars, he just doesn't feel like it's practical, right? And so he probably, you know, is really good at his job, is really good at his at selling items.、Um, but at the same time, it's like where you are financially is probably really good. You can increase your salary, you know, by a fixed amount every year, so things are really good. You're in this. Designer store and people will behave in a very, I want to say,、um, polite way. So the work environment is good. There isn't fierce competition. It's comfortable. It's a nice surrounding to to be in day in and day out, right? And I, I feel like for Torian people, that's very important to have a aesthetically pleasing, beautiful environment to 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 work in, to be in. Like you know, let's not forget the high ceiling. The airflow, the 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 traffic, the the barrage of clients and people with a lot of money. 
and also the chandeliers you know what more can you ask for so on the surface it seems really great you're making good money but the higher ideals the higher evolution of yourself it's basically somebody and i feel like it might be this person king of wands okay for some of you it might be a fire sign a sagittarius an aries or a leo sun moon or rising and this is somebody that is like um, very experienced very good at their craft um, I, I am hearing as well you know the, the roar okay the roar of the tiger so it's somebody who who commands a lot of respect when they speak it's someone who is quite an eloquent speaker they have a lot of charisma a lot of um, I don't want to say charm because that's not the right word they have a lot of charisma a lot of um, magnetism they draw people to them they there's something about though the way they sound they're either very assertive okay like whatever I say go they're very decisive um, they also don't like to compromise okay so for example if you're the salesman and you're in the stock room and you're taking inventory and you find out that you know these belts are like bought for 14 bucks made in china or whatever you know made in malaysia made in some some type of um, underdeveloped country right or developing country and you're just like we buy it for 14 bucks and we're selling it for a thousand that's not right so this is somebody who's like that who's ethical who who looks around and they see situations for what they are and you know they they cut through the facade and and i feel like they're they're commanding okay the the way they live their life is very ethics based and so somebody is kind of like calling you or calling you to um i want to say to to want to develop to your full potential to develop to your full ideal so never mind this comfortable place where you're making quite a bit of money you're good at your job you're in a beautiful exo a, 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 exotic is what i heard exotic environment there is more to life you know where where else can you go or what else can you do that will make you a lot happier that will fulfill all of these deep yearning and deep longings within your hearts of hearts that you feel this work environment is lacking and a lot of it has to do with you know ethics and morality a lot of it has to do with doing the right thing by the right people and a lot of it has to do with being in a work environment where i honestly feel like you're able to help people if that's what you want if, if, if wanting to help people to be of service to people to solve problems for people if that's what you really want and to be able to see people smile and and that you've done a really good job addressing their needs okay then that makes you happy that brings 100 percent satisfaction this is a person that wants you to see all of those things that wants you to see the whole picture that wants you to kind of like um, be in a situation where you're developing yourself to your best capabilities to your full potential because they know you're capable of a lot more happiness than you're settling for so I feel like there might be a situation where you are settling. You're um, you're feeling like it's not a hundred percent best fit, and so you're you're just like, oh, I'll find something a little bit better, maybe further down the line. But this person is like very action oriented, and they're like, eh, the time is now, Taurus. We should get a move on, okay? There is a very strong emotional connection here that you have with this person. I have the six of cups. And this is a soulmate card, and uh, the way that this card is coming out in this spread, you're meeting this person for a reason. You're, 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 you've met a, a soul counterpart, okay? It's like a, a soul family. It's, uh, the per this person is going to be very instrumental to you. In the next phase of your life, they're able to get you there. A lot of the times, people think soulmate relationships or, or soul ties last for a lifetime. And the way that I have seen it play out in my life and in other people's life, soulmates come in a time when we are in flux, when we are transitioning. 
from one thing to the next. And for some of us, we know where we want to go, but we don't really know how to take, like, like which path to take to get there. We also might not know how exactly to get there. The dream that we want and we envision for ourselves, it's so far away and it's so out of reach. And so we don't really know the practical steps that we need to get there. And a lot of the times, these soulmates show themselves. For, for a lot of people, it's a relationship partner where you really trust this person. And so they might, you know, give you a little bit of a nudge, a push, and you trust them because you love them. And so you take their advice. And then once you get where you're supposed to go, the relationship, unfortunately, you know, sometimes when, when people don't um, no longer grow as a unit and they grow apart, the relationship inevitably ends. So I feel like it's one of those things where you have a really good relationship with another person and they're trying to get you somewhere that you need to go. I do see a lot of resistance from your mentors. I see a lot of resistance dragging your feet. I literally some, see somebody uh, walking on sand and really dragging their feet, okay? Like, um, not really anxious about starting this new thing. And so they're, they're really just literally dragging their feet in the sand. And you know, um, sand show footsteps, right? Like if you step on it, it, it makes an indentation. So I, I feel like it's really driving home the point that you are dragging your feet because you're digging into the sand one stride after another, really digging into the sand because you're hesitant about this decision. I also feel this decision entails a lot of sacrifice. Okay, it's a big move. It's a big move. Um, there's a lot to mull over, rightfully so, and, and it is within your rights to, you know, mull over this decision. So I feel like somebody is showing you something, something that they want for you. They're very selfless. This is a really loving, caring person, and they would do this for anybody without strings attached. They see the skills and the assets in a person. They have a really keen eye, and so they're able to look at you and know exactly what you're good at. They look at another person, and they know exactly what that person's good at. So they're giving you this encouragement to do something great for yourself. But they would also do that for a perfect stranger. If, the stra if they look at a stranger and that stranger is not happy, they'll be like, hey, here's what you can do. Here's what I really would advise you to do. So it's somebody that would do this for anybody and they don't want anything you know, in return. There's no strings attached here because they're a good person, okay? Um, however, you're looking at this skeptically Okay, because I feel like for you, with this king of, pre of pentacles, this is somebody who weighs out pros and cons, who weighs out both sides of a decision. And this is somebody who's also like practical enough, where they would charge for advice. And the fact that this person is willingly giving out advice or giving so much of themselves and, and they don't really want anything in return. It makes you nervous, right? It makes you a little bit like, can I really trust this 100%? Can I trust that this person will be there in the long haul, for the long haul? Can I trust that this person really doesn't want anything in return from me? Can I really trust that, you know, there's definitely no strings attached to this really steep price type, for example? Excuse me, I have to take some a sip of water. And so, you're looking at a situation that has uh, a lot of potential. It's a great offer that's, that's like in your hands. And you're trying to figure out what to do with it, to go forward with it. And you're taking your time making decisions. So I feel like you have all the answers you need in the month of December 2019. But in terms of moving things along and making this decision, the decision process might drag on into January of your own doing. So you already have the information you need. You already know which way you want to go. And it seems like 
future meaning is where you're planning to go. You're planning to take on this big opportunity, but um, you're dragging your feet. Okay, this hangman energy indicates a situation where there isn't like um, decisiveness. It's uh, being in a state of limbo and mulling over a decision, mulling over options. And, and I feel like you're, you, you have everything you need, but the only thing that's really getting in your way is pretty much whether or not you want to go forward with this. And uh, I'm not saying that you're really, you know, taking your sweet time. I feel like it's a big decision and you're hesitant because of it. So I don't blame you. It's uh, going to be very transformative. And you know that it's a major big phase in your life that you need to um, prepare for, okay? So you might be in the process of uh, preparing for this. I have here the Fool, which indicates to me that you're gonna go forward with it because you know in, in all, you know, in all sense of practicality, this is going to springboard you into a new phase in your life a new job possibly, a new location, a new major endeavor. And um, everything is happening so fast. Okay, you're thinking like everything is happening so fast. You're getting nudged. See that dog right there? I usually think the, the dog is um, following the man. But in, in, in all the times that I've looked at this card, it's, I, I feel like the dog is like encouraging him. This is somebody that is a companion to you that will walk the distance with you, that will be there by your side, you know, through through the, the rough times, through all the ups and downs, you have a companion, you're not doing this on your own, so it's somebody who's making a promise to you, we're going to do this together, we're in this together, you know, through thick and thin, pretty much, okay, so for some of you, this could even be tying the knot, getting engaged, getting married, um, moving in together, some major endeavor. And we have as well the devil. And the devil energy is a situation that keeps us really down, okay? And for you guys, I do feel like it's the practicality. Somebody might be showing you something. And you're just like, realistically, how are we going to do it? What What is it going to entail? You know, is it really going to pan out? So I feel like there's an element of great risk associated with it. I can stay here in this um, beautiful, you know, shop with the chandeliers or I can try my luck doing something else that might not be sales related but I'm um, foregoing everything that I know, everything that is stable, everything that is predictable in my life so I feel like the devil is it's like that sense of predictability that you're very accustomed to and now that you have to, you know, turn over a new page and, and walk down a new path is triggering a lot of fears and anxiety in you, hence you're hesitant. And so, the middle of the month of December, we find you ready to go, and then something stops you, still weighing out the pros and cons with this uh, justice card. Um, for some of you, you might have a lot of things that you need to square it away before you take on this endeavor, okay? For some of you, the Hierophant, schools, institutions, okay? For example, <clears throat> you might be at a job waiting for um, acceptance letters from a university, a school. Um, I see like law school, I see med school, I see like a really expensive course of study, okay? And expensive is all relative, right? But we know law school and, and, and graduate school and uh, medical school, they're, these are like really expensive undertaking. And um, it requires not only, you know, the, the money that we have to invest in it, but also the years that we're in school where we can't work full time and earn a lot of money. So it's like there are opportunity costs, not just liter literal cost of something, but like figuratively a lot of opportunity costs. Some of you might be in a work situation and you're just like, I'm not, I'm okay with it. It makes, it pays the bills. It, I, I get a lot of money. I like my coworkers. I like the work environment. It's beautiful. It's extravagant. But I, I, I want something more for myself further down the line. And so you might be waiting on, you, you might be waiting on things to line up one by one before you undertake this major change, evolution in your life. 
You might be waiting for acceptance letters. You might be waiting for a loan for a house even. Um, you might be waiting on test scores. You might be waiting on results. You might be waiting on, you know, being able to, there, there's something here tying you like physically that you can't really extract yourself from. You might be waiting on a divorce. You might be waiting on letters for a separation. You might be waiting on just something to, to kind of like unravel and clear up before you can move forward, okay? So that, that's what I'm sensing here. And I'm gonna talk about the last two cards because the last two cards indicate the flip side. And um, so I talked about you as the salesman, right? Uh, with a nice suit, very young, very handsome, uh, really, you know, just handsome, attractive has great charisma and you know he, he looks the part and then on the flip side of that is the customer the customer coming into um, the store with the chandeliers okay I'm really drawn to those chandeliers for whatever reason I feel like there's something where you're staying that you really like okay that you spend a lot of time either polishing or you just like looking at them I'll go back to that in a little bit because I'm getting messages from the customer's perspective. So I, I feel it as a woman. So I'm, I'm looking through her eyes, so I can't see what she looks like, okay? But she seems to me like she's in her 30s, in her 40s. She's on a good career path. You know, she has disposable income. She's uh, climbing up there. She likes her job. And so she's in this expensive store. It seems like it's made more for men, okay? I'm, I'm seeing like those leather shoes and uh, they're leather dress shoes for men. The belts and the wallets, they seem like to be for men. The, the bags are like uh, more like duffel style bags or messenger bags. So they seem more to be for men. And it seems like she's buying something for somebody significant in her life, possibly uh, a significant other or a man in her life and it doesn't have to be a boyfriend or you know someone she's dating it's just buying something for a masculine person in her life okay take that how it uh, how it fits with your situation and so i feel like for some of you this might be you and and these two cards indicate that um buying a gift buying something for somebody that is in your life and it's somebody that um, deserves the best, right? It's somebody that you hold in really high regards. And so you're in this store trying to find something that is worth the price tag, right? You don't want to buy them some cheap old thing and, and call it a day. You're actually taking the time, spending the, the money to make, because this person means a lot to you. And so, the salesman is probably aware of this, that, you know, money is not easy to come by. And so you want the best for whoever it is that's in your environment. You want to give the best of yourself. And so he's not going to try to upsell you. He's not going to, you know, uh, sell you a belt that they, the store bought for like 14 bucks and, you know, charge you a thousand. He's, if anything, he might try to, you know, dissuade you um, just walking out of that store because he feels like the merchandise might not be worth it, right? And so what I'm seeing here is a situation where someone means a lot to you. And um, I have here the Nine of Swords and the Ten of Wands, okay? The Nine of Swords is a lot of worries, a lot of anxiety, a lot of... Um, a lot of worries, a lot of anxiety, and I feel like there's an element of guilt here. And then the Ten of Wands is a big burden. It could be financial, it could be physical, it could be emotional, spiritual, whatever it is. So with both of these cards and the imagery is there these mice, these mice, okay? So there's a situation here and a person that you're dealing with where They mean a lot to you. And I also feel like, you know, the, the, the gifts are nice, but the, 
I guess like um, whatever you do, you feel like it's not enough. Okay, so whatever you do, even if I buy them this, you know, one thousand um, dollar scarf or shoes or uh, belt or, or, or purse or whatever, it, it doesn't mean it, it. It doesn't even begin to tell this person how much they mean to me. And so, as the customer, you might be thinking like, maybe the store is not the way to go. Maybe rather than buying something, you know, that they don't really need. It's nice, it has the designer brand, but in the greater scheme of things, it doesn't really add value to the relationship. Does that make sense? And so I, I do sense that for some of you, there's an element of like making up, wanting to make up to a person for everything that, that they've done for you. Wanting to compensate, wanting to make up, and I keep hearing make up, so it's sort of like there, there could have been an estranged situation between the two of you, and you're trying to, to make up, make it up to them. You're trying to buy this gift and, and to give it to them, and at the same time say like, I'm sorry for everything that I've done, or you know, talk to me again, or, or, or come back, or whatever it is. You're trying to, um, you're trying to, I feel like you might be going about this the wrong way because it's not the things, it's not the physical item, it's not the price tag, it's, it, it, they don't need any of these things. They might just need you to come to them honest and open with your hands stretched out with this offer, with this apology, with, this, with these words because at this point I feel like they're kind of turning their back. Okay? And so I see energies coming out in this spread where there's a little bit of guilt. I wish I'd done things differently. I wish I'd look at a situation for what it is. And I wish that, you know, things were different. I wish that I, I've seen it sooner. I, I wish that I could have had this clarity. And I'm hearing that song, the, the piano piece, uh, Claire de Lune, um, coming in. So I, I wish I had this clarity sooner. And so I, I feel like there's um, something here where you're very hesitant about possibly approaching this person. You might feel that they have moved on. You might feel like it's too late to make amends. You might really want them to, you know, to have a sit down conversation with them and clear the air. But the emotional state with this crescent moon that is like um, a little bit foggy. It's like the emotional state is very unsettled and very unclear, so you don't even know how to approach this emotional topic to clear the air, okay? So that's what I'm sensing here. Um, there's definitely a decision that you're clear about, and so don't drag your feet anymore, uh, Taurus. There's a person in your environment who is a soulmate. I, I do see that. I see this love that is um, built on a lot of respect. A lot of like seeing the value in the other person, not in a tangible way. How much money can they give me? How much money can we add together as a couple? But a person that that is like really touching you in an emotional and spiritual way. A person who doesn't care about money, who doesn't care about resources, who, because they don't care about these things, they attract money and, and financial resources and, and, and good luck, like, you know, like bees to honey, okay? So like, it, it's somebody who lives their life with a, lot, with a lot of generosity. And because of it, they attract a lot of abundance to them. And this is somebody who touches you in a very emotional, spiritual way that you have never experienced before with another person. And I'm also sensing that, you know, this person, you want them to go the distance with you. But the nature of soulmate relationships is they come together for a purpose. Once that purpose has been reached, it is up to the two of you to decide. Are we still going to, you know, grow together? Or are we at a, 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 um, a situation where we are reaching stasis and we're not really progressing anymore? 
and grown apart. So I feel like, you know, it's, um, you're, you're at a pivotal junction right now and you have to really, you know, make that decision and no longer drag your feet, okay? I do feel a lot of you, um, this is a major overhaul of your life as you know it. So you're aware of this and that's why you're hesitant about making this decision. For others of you, um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of schooling vibe, okay? I would say it scares you, I feel, you know, to, to, to be, to, to commit yourself to, you know, schooling and possibly not being able to work while you're in school or being able to work like reduced hours and not being able to afford the lifestyle that you're used to, right? And so th there's a nervousness here. And um, it's normal, okay? It's normal. So make this decision. Don't drag your feet and try to get a move on it, okay? Um, like I said, you know, next year is a number four year. It's a very stable year. And I feel like it's a year for us to really work hard. Whatever we work hard at to achieve, we're going to see results, okay? It's a year to work hard so that you can get a promotion. It's a year to show others how hardworking you are so that you can like be an expert in your field so that others see you as a serious, uh, not, not only a serious employee, but someone who's really good at their craft, okay? So I'm gonna leave it at that, Taurus. I hope the reading finds you well and I hope that it is helpful for you as we journey through December 2019. I wish you all the best. Please take care of yourself, and I'll talk to you guys in January, okay? Have a wonderful holiday season. Spend time with loved ones, families. Take your time, all right? Um, and for those who are still emailing me regarding private readings, um, I'm no longer doing those, but I do have a link in the description box for um, a psychic out of California. Her name is Bridget. She's amazing. I um, highly recommend that you get a reading with her if you're interested in spiritual guidance or advice as you're navigating through this energy okay i will leave it at that take care and i'll talk to you guys soon all right and i'll talk to you guys soon all right and i'll talk to you guys soon all right and i'll talk to you guys